but uh, go ahead. Uh, so yeah, so uh, my name's Damien Keel. Um, I'm the programme leader for the uh, sports, uh, the exercise and sports science distance learning degree at uh, Manchester Metropolitan University. Uh, this is Adam Palin. He's a uh, uh, e-learning technologist um, who we uh, kind of employ to kind of look after all the techie needs of the of the program. Um, so the two of us will be actually be delivering the uh, the webinar today. Uh, this is our first webinar, so kind of uh, um, kind of bear with us as we bumble our way through. <laughs> Hopefully, it will all be fine. Uh, the other person to kind of acknowledge is uh, Adrian Burden, um, and uh, the three of us have actually kind of uh, spent the last uh, well, what is it? Four years, four, now, yeah. four years actually kind of uh, piecing this project together uh, and actually we're kind of coming to the, to the end of it now. So um, we're kind of looking at what, what's, what's next on the list. Um, okay, so uh, just to kind of give you a... So, sorry, we're just going to turn the video off so that um, we don't destroy a bandwidth and you can still see the rest of our presentation. We'll turn it back on again at the end um, when we go through our questions. Okay, so in terms of uh, kind of an outline of what we're going to cover today, um, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of, uh, of the course just to kind of put it into context for you. Um, and then we're going to um, kind of highlight and kind of go through our first phase of development. Uh, and, and that kind of gives you a background as to kind of why we actually decided to give every student an iPad. Uh, and what we've decided, um, because hopefully you'll have lots of questions, uh, is that we'll have kind of three periods during the presentation where you can, you can actually ask some questions or at least we'll kind of respond to some of the questions that are, are kind of appearing in the, in the chat window. So Adam's monitoring them, uh, the, monitoring them at the moment. Um, once we've done that uh, first set of questions, then we'll move on to the, on to the second phase, which is the kind of the main phase, kind of looking at how we've used um, iBooks in the program and how we've used iBooks author and, and the kind of the production of of ebooks and some of our experiences uh, associated with that. So kind of hopefully that will uh, help if you're looking at developing um, uh, developing ebooks for yourself. We'll then have some more questions, um, and then we'll kind of uh, kind of lead into the into the final bit where we will talk about staff support, uh, distribution of uh, of the ebooks. Uh, and this kind of idea of transformative learning, if you like, so transformation of, of pedagogy. Uh, we'll kind of end there and then open it up again for, for some more questions. Okay, so in, in terms of the uh, of the program that we've got, um, it's a it's a full program, so it's a full undergraduate program. Uh, it takes about uh, four and a half years to actually complete the program for. Uh, for the students, they actually do it part time, um, although potentially they can do it full time if they want to. Um, most, I would say, the, the minimum time is four and a half years. Most will probably take about five and a half um, because we offer some flexibility in terms of the, the units that they cover and, and maybe they suspend and, and whatever else it is. And they're a relatively complicated uh, cohort just by the, the nature of, of you know what they're doing. Um, Although we call it a distance learning degree, technically it's actually a blended learning degree um, because two of the units, uh, so a level four unit and a level five unit, are actually completed and only can be completed um, via a five-day residential. Um, so that the, the kind of there is preparatory material uh, leading up to that unit. They'll come in for five days uh, and, and spend uh, five days kind of doing some lab work and doing some assessments. Um, so that's level four and level five. And then in level six, we do actually have uh, three, uh, two other three day contact points just to kind of help them out in obviously what's the most important year for them. Uh, at the moment, there are about 220 students on the entire program. Um, but the last um, kind of the very last year at the moment are still on the old program so they actually don't have uh, iPads so we're kind of rolling it through um, um, through as, as we kind of develop the resources. The, the program is actually quite, um, uh, you know, it's been kind of running for 15 years so it's actually uh, it's been running for quite a long time uh, and was actually developed as part of a, 
a link between us and the Army Physical Training Corps. Uh, so it's been running running for a long time. So we've got quite a lot of experience of actually running this distance learning program. Um, but with the with the new program using the iPads and iBooks, um, then we've been going for about three years now. So typical of, of the era, uh, you kind of go back 10, 15 years. Um, it was very much paper-based. Uh, and we did actually even uh, bridge into sending out CDs uh, to the students. Um, and we were, uh, you know, we were very happy with the, with the material and the content that was actually there. Um, and, and so were the students. Uh, but, you know, obviously with, with this kind of material, with this kind of delivery mode, if you like, um, there is quite, you know, there is limited uh, interactivity and, and the usability is not great. So students did want to kind of uh, be mobile in their study. Um, you know, they would have to have a whole bag just for the material that they would have to have to carry around. So it, it wasn't ideal. Uh, and especially given the nature of our students, they tend to be extremely busy. They tend to be on the move. Um, and, you know, it was, a, it was just, you know, it's just a little bit cumbersome. So when we first started to kind of look at changing the program, um, we obviously weren't 100% sure whether the department would, would kind of fully fund um, the, the project. I mean, we kind of got various ideas of kind of where we wanted to go with it. Um, but obviously, it's quite a commitment um, by the department to kind of fund, you know, iPads and you know, uh, employ a, a learning technologist, et cetera, et cetera. So we were, weren't 100% sure what would happen. Um, so actually, at the start, we, we kind of came up with three kind of potential endpoints, if you like. Um, and obviously, the top of our list was interactive ebooks, um, and you know, in an ideal world, iPads. So the iPad one had just been released, or kind of been released a little bit before. Uh, so in my head, that was kind of you know, that's where we wanted it to go. But you know, realistically, uh, that was probably unlikely. Um, so the the second kind of uh, option that we had was to have some kind of down, downloadable EPUB um, ebook, um, which would obviously contain some kind of interactive resources, but uh, not not so not as much as as we would have liked. Uh, and then the final one, um, or the final possible one, was uh, an offline kind of website, if you like, uh, or potentially kind of put onto a multi multimedia CD. Uh, so it's worth bearing in mind, given the um, uh, given the dates of this. Uh, at this stage, there was an iPad one, but there was no iBook author. So the options for making eBooks were were actually quite limited, uh, and and that was one of the things that we did consider. We, we spent, uh, or Adam spent quite a bit of time, kind of looking around at different um, different ways of, of kind of creating. Uh, ebooks which which kind of contain the material and, and allowed us to do what we wanted to do um, so actually the the very the very start of this project um, which was in uh, 2011 we went through if you like a, a recreation stage of the of the paper-based material uh, used Wimber create and uploaded uh, the web pages into Moodle which is the virtual learning environment that using um, so that was you know and that, that was that was fine and actually when we kind of asked the students whether they liked the, the kind of the web pages and the, the ability to kind of click and, and link through they they did they certainly kind of uh, liked that like that ability but you know to be honest it wasn't really what we were after um, but we were quite limited uh, at that time So it was still very much about content delivery. Um, it was about us giving the students material, which they then learned. So it's still very staff focused, if you like. So it's still very us orientated, which you know I'm not not a massive fan of. And we kind of recognised that we really needed to increase the student interaction uh, with the material. Uh, provide them with with activities that were stimulating and engaging, uh, and certainly when you look around the literature, you know it is very clear that 
that kind of thing is is probably the most important uh, factor to um, leading to success in mobile learning environments. Um, so we certainly needed to to shift our and if you like our entrenched view from delivery of material to this idea of facilitation of learning. And I think for me that's that's actually quite an important thing, and it's one of the one of the hardest things that I've certainly faced when I've supported you know, been supporting staff over the years is that um, you know we are very used to this idea of you know of a, of a lecture environment where it's about us giving the information um, and we kind of really needed to move away from that conceptually we needed to move away from that so you know, ultimately what we were actually looking for was a way to to make the material uh, and make our pedagogy engaging and interactive we needed to make sure that whatever we gave the students was was easy to use and was mobile uh, and ideally contained as much of the resources as as we could and and to be honest the options were very limited at the time um, and it really did you know having those kind of constraints and, and that was the kind of thing that was guiding us it really led us to only one conclusion uh, and that was that we would have to use uh, iPads um, and we would have to try and use iBooks so we were actually very fortunate that the department bought into that idea um, and actually decided to fund uh, an iPad for every every single one of our distance learning students um, so in in the first year um, that equated to about I think it was actually 43 but about 40 iPads uh, that we gave out at, at our induction so at this point I, uh, okay. Adam's been kind yep, of I've been monitoring the, um, the chat and Kathy here at the start um, asked some interesting questions she said most DL courses tend to be PGT I'm interested in yours being undergraduate who is the student demographic are they already in employment and why did you choose to make this a DL yeah that's a, a yeah very good questions um, the student demographic is generally they're mature um, I think nowadays we are getting a, a, a wider age range of students um, so I think the youngest student on the on the course is actually 18 um, but if you go back a few years, the, probably the youngest age was, was around about 25. So I'd say that our average age is over 30, um, and it can go all the way up to uh, 55, I think is probably the oldest person we have on at the moment. They are all in employment, uh, pretty much, uh, whether that's full-time um, full parents or um, employed as professional athletes, um, and then you get a whole variety of you know, people, you know, whether they're accountants or, or whatever it might be. Most are kind of looking to change, uh, change their life in some way, um, and actually kind of looking for the future. Why did you choose me this? And um, in terms of why why we chose to make this a distance learning course, um, originally when we first developed it, we we kind of. Uh, we were working in conjunction with the Army Physical Training Corps, um, and actually, there was, was a lot more residential base. So we would go down to there and deliver kind of weekends. They would come up to us, um, and it was it was actually quite restricting in in the students that we could actually open open it up to. Um, it was actually not as flexible as what we would like it to be. Um, so then we kind of actually went into this idea of almost a full distance learning uh, course. Okay, uh, Ian Wilson's asked, how do you keep track of the iPads? Have any gone missing or damaged? Um, damaged, yes. Um, but the way that we the way that we do it is that we give the, the student, it's their iPad, ultimately. And it's the only way that they can actually do the course. So if they do damage it or it goes missing, uh, then they have to sort it out. Um, you know, the, they do have to sign what we call it loan agreement. So if they do kind of uh, suspend or they withdraw from the program, then they do send it back. Uh, and at the moment, we've had no issues with that at all. So they're, they're all very honest, which is very nice. Um, 
So Ryan's asked here, it sounded like you had little choice about what technology to use when you set this up. If you were starting now, would you still use iPads and iBooks or would you prefer something else? I think we're, we're, still, we're still at the cutting edge of it. We're still very happy with, with what the software offers. Um, and the students, uh, the students are very pleased with it. Um, I mean, you, can certainly, you can certainly get cheaper options nowadays, uh, but whether they're any better in terms of ease of use and, and functionality, um, you know, to be honest, we probably haven't looked into it for the last couple of years because we, we haven't needed to. Um, but one of the, you know, one of the draws of, of using something like an iPad and, and iBooks is that it's actually really easy. Um, and the students, you know, with very little kind of guidance will actually kind of pick it up quite quick. And um, last, last one for this, this section here. So the students get to keep the iPads? Yes, <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah. I mean, I mean ultimately, when, when they finish their degree, you know, it will be four and a half, five and a half years down the line. And, you know, what's the, the use of, a, of an iPad that's that old? Uh, it's actually quite, you know, quite limited. So we, uh, although we haven't got to that point yet, um, that's our intention. Okay, so I'll take it on uh, through phase two, uh, which um, is not to just present this material in the written format. We wanted to engage learners in a variety of ways. So we wanted to appeal to different learners as well, whether they're at the training ground, perhaps, that it could be posted abroad in the armed forces or sitting at home on a sofa. We wanted um, to, so that they, they could have all the resources in one on one device they didn't necessarily need the an internet connection and um still at that point ibooks author and the ipad was what allowed us to meet all of the needs that we had so what is ibooks author well it's an ebook authoring app it's basically if you want to put it in another way it's like an advanced text editor it you, allows you to uh, drop videos in and um, embed uh, multimedia content. Uh, this can be such things as even interactive widgets. So say if you had um, multiple choice questions that you wanted to pose at the end of your chapter, you could just drag and drop them in. Um, it's free to download, which is excellent. Uh, only, only caveat to that is it requires a Mac to run on. Um, so to run the software, you need to have a Mac laptop or Mac desktop computer. But the benefit of that is it's easy to use as any kind of Apple products tend to be. There, it's, not, it's not too complicated it, and it works great. Uh, another thing that's worth um, being aware of that the eBooks it creates they're only compatible with iPads or Macs. So you can open the iBook on an iPad or you can open it on a Mac. You can't, um, you can't say open it on a, on a PC. You can um, save the eBook that you create as a PDF, which works really well, but it means that any, say, videos or interactive content that you put in there, they, they no longer work. Um, the other benefit of it is that if you are creating your eBooks, they are free to distribute for non-commercial purposes. If, you, if you're looking to sell them through the um, iBook store, then Apple will start taking their cut and all, all that kind of happens. So let's take a, a closer look at iBooks Author itself. So here is a, a screenshot of iBooks Author in action. Um, so there seems to be quite a lot going on, but I'll, I'll talk you through it. The section on the left here is where you can navigate through the chapters and sections of your, of your book, your ebook. Over here on the right is where the styles are, and I've come up with a few custom ones for our ebooks, just so the design is always consistent throughout the ebook. So the header will always be in a certain color, or the uh, sections will always they'll always look the same. The font will always be consistent. At the top here is the um, the widgets button, and this is um, which allows you to embed elements of interactivity, such as, sim like I was saying uh, before, simple multiple choice questions, drag and drop questions, uh, image galleries, even keynote presentations, or some HTML modules, which you can create on other online resources, such as Bookery, um, which is a website out there. Another way that um, I've customized the look and feel of this book is, is through the header imagery. Uh, and now on this image, you might have seen on our slides as well, and uh, and on the chapter sections there at the top. Um, that's just to, it helps present the material in a, in a professional style. And, and, and so that is all one whole package um, 
of, of learning materials, which is which is a nice nice look and feel to it. Uh, up on here on the right is a is a web link. Now this links to a Google Doc form, which allows a student to submit to us directly any errors or omissions that they find in the ebook as they go along. They just tap that and then fill out the form. And then finally. Um, here is uh, one of our embedded tutorial videos. So to, to add a video directly into your ebook, it's easy as drag and drop and you find your video in your finder window, it's quick time format, you drag it in, you drop it in, and then you just have to resize or position it. Now the students really, really love this feature and they say it helps bring the content to life. You're able to watch part of the lecture or say tutorial. That's um, explaining the element that you've just been reading about and it helps reaffirm their understanding. So, we um, here's, here's a shot of, our, of a lecture in action and a, and a tutorial, and um, we undertook a process of recording all of the on-site lectures, and this was carried out with a screen recorder capturing the presentation, so the PowerPoint uh, that the, the lecturer was going through, and then I pointed a camera on the lecturer who was wearing a wireless microphone and filmed them, and then I synced both these films up. And then what I'd do was pass this film to the lecturer who would chunk up the lecture into clips of say five to 10 minutes based on the topic area. Um, there's no point. There is just no point in putting an entire hour long, 40 minute long lecture in, into any kind of learning content. The students get bored. They're not gonna watch it all. But if you, if you get little snapshots of something that brings it up into life, what it is that they've been reading about in a, in a, on a book or some kind of thing, then you, they love it. It's, it's, it's brilliant. There is one thing though, and, and that's the implications of cramming these eBooks full of all this brilliant video, is that the file size becomes huge. So initially, before we slimmed everything down, the ebooks that I was making were coming out at around three gig. Now, obviously, that's crazy big. That's too big. So I reduced the video quality down and the dimensions, say, no point putting 1080p uh, quality videos in there. You just slim it down to 512, 211, which is what I used. And the size is absolutely fine on, a, on an iPad. Its quality is great, but there's no point putting all that extra quality in there. And then we managed to get each book down to just below a gig, really. And now it works, but students still sometimes have issues with um, with downloading these ebooks of this size. Uh, the only kind of solution that we've come up with is really just to be patient. Now we did a, a quick demo where Damien and I went to a, a coffee shop and we logged on to their Wi-Fi and we downloaded one of our ebooks. Now it took an hour, but we filmed it in process and then we sped it up and we showed it to the student. We say, look, just hang on in there, leave it going overnight or whatever. But when you come back, it'll be there. The ebook will be there. So they, they do tend to be big. So, oh, yes, be aware. File size, video quality and resolution. That's, that's where you've got, to, you've got to be careful. So here's, here's a, a screenshot of the ebook on an iPad. So this is this is in action here. And so there's excellent functionality, notes functionality built into the iBooks app on an iPad. If, if you've never used it before, you should download it. It's, it's dead interesting. It's really good and useful. And so you can drag in the highlight text and then you can color that text into different note colors and then you can type extra bits in there. And then with these notes, you can then uh, group them into study cards or you can email them directly to yourself. So it's, it's a it's a brilliant function really uh, functionality in there and now part of our transformative learning learning aim is for staff to embed links directly to apps within the ebooks uh, so this this allows the student as, as Damien mentioned before to put into action the concepts that they have been learning so for example here doing biomechanical biomechanical analysis before the use of iPads in the old program was basically impossible, it was very difficult. And the only time that they would have experience of this was during the two residentials um, when they came on campus here. But now, however, um, staff can design a greater variety of activities and with the appropriate apps, the students can actually get better and more varied experience of these important skills. So it, it really has transformed their learning. So things to consider if, if you were wanting to undertake kind of project like this is um, staff buy-in. I mean, it's, it's a fairly obvi obvious thing, but it needs to be emphasized. 
that it's not, it's just not going to happen. If they aren't on board with a vision that you're trying to achieve, you're just going to get content on an iPad. It's, it's not going to be, it's not going to be the transformative thing that you, that you, hey, you can achieve, but that you want to achieve. You want, you want the students to have excellent, uh, an experience using, uh, using your eBooks. Uh, so, so, Support. I mean, this uh, evidence-based conceptual map was something that Damien came up with that uh, stimulated ideas and helped guide staff to what to what it was that we wanted from the material and deliveries. So they can navigate through that and and help think of of, of what they can achieve. A timeline is is vastly important, really. The, the, you need clear deadlines, and uh, Damien has uh, regular bi-monthly meetings with with the staff who are writing the books to discuss the timeline and the progress. I mean, I guess as we all know, if if you know if, if you know, academics have a lot on the plates. So uh, if if you're not on top of it, it could it could get get lost in the ether. So another thing that we need to need to consider is copyright. Now, this is really important, as it is in any kind of um, academic setting with um, content that goes into your ebook, all images and videos need to be Creative Commons or you need to obtain the copyright. Also, because we in, in, uh, included videos of lectures, we needed the performance rights of the, of the um, staff who were delivering the lecture, the lecturer. So we had to go through MMU Legal here who drew up a contract for the lecturer to release the rights of their performance. Uh, luckily, all of our lecturers were absolutely fine with that. And just to give you an idea from a first meeting about creating an ebook to it going live is approximately 12 months. That's how long it's, it's been taking us. So how are you going to get these ebooks to your students? Well, we, um, because of the file size, we've, we've split our ebooks up into about two to six per unit. And we store these on uh, an Amazon S3 server. Now this is uh, a cloud-based um, server where you, you pay for the data transfer. So uh, an example of this is last uh, two years ago, it cost um, us in total for the year 24 pound, which is brilliant. But you know, the more books you have, the more they're downloaded, the more you have to pay. Um, so last year for us, that went up to 56 pound. So it's, it's really great value for money. Um, it's excellent, works, and that's that's what we use. Uh, there is a free option, which is iTunes U. You could you could if your if your institution has an iTunes U account, then you can put your ebooks, your uh, iBooks, up onto there for free of charge. Uh, Apple will cover that for you, but um, we don't have a uh, iTunes U account as yet. So here's a photo of uh, lots of happy students on launch day. So this was Wednesday, October the 6th. We distributed 40 iPads over two days to new students. Um, so obviously we, we decided, right, we want each student to leave with an ebook on their device. Uh, it's just so happened that having say 20 students all hitting one uh, one Wi-Fi router downloading a gig ebook all at once, yeah, it killed the network. So um, what we what we learned was that we need to stagger this event over the day, and then eventually everyone left happy. So now when the students come on campus to receive their iPad, they're given it straight away. They're told to log on and they download a smaller ebook just so they can see how the process of it works. Um, but they were they are always very very happy when they leave our campus. So uh, at this point, I will just say, are there any questions, Tim? Yes, there are. There's quite a few, actually. There's a few, right? Let's, a few. let's go for it. Uh, so uh, Richard asked the question about preloading of materials. Oh, right. Yes. Now, um, this would be this would be what some you know you could say a lovely a lovely thing to do. Fantastic. You get your device. Oh, it's got all the materials on there. But an iPad is a personal device. It's yours and yours to personalize yourself. So unfortunately, we, we don't know of as yet a way to, to give the student that their device so they can have whatever they want on it, but then for it to come preloaded with the, our materials, it's impossible to do at the moment, as far as we know. Yeah, I know, I know Apple are kind of been going backwards and forwards and there have been some kind of workarounds of trying to get apps on, uh, yeah. on preload apps. Uh, but at the moment, because it's all tied into the Apple ID, then you, you can't really. 
the next question was from Scott. Uh, how do you deal with getting the devices to overseas students? Um, we actually, if they don't come to induction, now some of them do, but obviously if they're if they're really far, then uh, then they won't bother. Uh, then we actually post it out, uh, which can actually cause problems in customs, yeah. uh, which we found out over the last couple of years. So it's uh, it can be a, a bit of a pain in the neck. Um, and we are kind of looking at options of, of actually, um, if you like, reducing the, the fees for the students so they can actually then go out and buy their own iPad uh, just to save the problems that you kind of that you get with customs. Uh, Scott's second question is, and also where their connectivity might be rubbish. Um, yeah, it's, it's again, well, no, what did we do? No, no we didn't put it on a, on a disc in the end, did we? No. no. So, in the, what you ah, and that's what we did. Um, the student uh, connected using a uh, wired computer, so their desktop computer was uh, had an Ethernet ca connect cable connected to the internet, and they down we gave them the link to download the ebook direct to their PC, and then they hooked up their um, iPad to the PC, and then we were able to install the ebook on there. So if their Wi-Fi was poor, but their wired connection was was a bit better. Yeah, I mean, nowadays, to be honest, I mean, I've I've had a Skype meeting with uh, one of our students who's in India, uh, and he's not in a city; he's actually uh, he's actually outside of the city, and uh, we were downloading a document off Moodle, um, and we were pretty much uh, clicked on open or clicked on the download at the same time, and and his came up quicker than mine did. Mm -hmm. um, so nowadays, it's actually become less and less of an issue. Uh, another question from Scott: Can you distribute your resources to other institutions? Uh, give, sell, or otherwise, what about OER? Um, we have considered links with other institutions, um, and it has something that, you know, it is something that we have pursued, although we haven't kind of gone there yet. Um, I'm not sure the university would be wanting to give it away. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of work has gone into it. Yeah. Uh, but that's, uh, that's for somebody on a high pay grade to actually sort out. The uh, OER, again, yeah, it's not something that we've really kind of considered at this stage. Um, Sue asks, are the apps you use supply to the students or do they have to buy it for themselves? Uh, now, they, these, these are what they buy, they purchase themselves. So, uh, for example, explain everything, they were suggested to use that once um, and that was like $5.99. The way that we looked at it was just as you would recommend a textbook, that, that would be the same. Um, yeah, I mean the apps. The apps are really, really cheap. Um, so, and the students are usually happy. They're happy to buy them. Yeah. We haven't had anyone say, "How you know, holding their hands up, saying they don't want it yet." Uh, Javid asked the question: uh, Do you provide instructions in the use of iPads mm -hmm. and create support resources for students? Interesting, interesting <laughs> question. Because when we began, we Damien and I sat together. We were like, "Oh, right, we should we should write a guide on how to you know turn on the iPad, get girls." We started writing it. And then it's just so easy. We were we were writing what's on the screen in front of you that you do yourself. It's it is un, it was unnecessary in the end. And it, I mean, if you do, if the student did need help um, in that area, they could just look at it on the website. Like go to the help guides. There isn't really much that we can write to help them. Yeah. Uh, Kate asked the question: How do you manage the combination of your eBooks with pre-published reference texts? Um, the uh, the students are, are actually required to buy um, uh, reference text, usually for each of the the units that they take, um, and the the ebooks actually contain um, not necessarily direct links because you can't link, um, but they will contain kind of like now go read this section in you know Mercado Catch and Catch or, or Weinberg and Gould or whatever it might be. Um, so there is you know, a direct kind of link. And we, we kind of recognize that the students have to kind of uh, get to some ac academic material so they get used to that kind of language, um, which is, is, you know, which is obviously generally a lot harder than um, than the material that we write. So we, uh, we kind of use both. Um, so that one, how many hours of notational uh, learning, I think I answered that one, it's 300 hours or three or 30 credits, the cost of development. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I don't know. I think you you need a uh, you need a you need a person such as myself perhaps to to um, I this is my job. This is my full time job. I I support. I you know build these things, uh, and this is this is what's taken this is my daily workload, and it, it it gives me a lot to do. So I would I would suggest yeah that that would be a cost. Uh, yeah, Javid asked a question. Um, so Javid's students have iPad mini devices. Do you have, do you have a view on the size of the iPad uh, mm -hmm. to be used and why? Yeah, it is. We, did, we yeah. did think about it because obviously it's a lot cheaper as well. So you know, it's kind of a bonus. Um, but we we went for the larger one because with with the content on the ebook, you gotta you gotta be able to be able to type notes on it and to see it all properly. We just thought. We we're given a proper size, really, and also we went for the thirty-two gig because if we're giving them lots of large ebooks download, like um, say, say four four books for a unit, and they've got four units, and each book's close to a gig, then it soon adds up. Uh, Kathy's asked a question: How um, how are you, how are you quality assuring the development of the ebook? What are the processes? Uh, it's uh, a two-stage process, really. Uh, I edit. All the iBooks. Um, so the staff member will, will kind of write it initially. They'll send it across to me. Um, I'll kind of go through and, and, and try and get some consistency in terms of the the, the level, the content, and, and the feel for um, feel for the actual ebook. I'll then ship it back to the to the staff member. They'll then uh, make the changes, ship it back to me. Uh, so we kind of do that a couple of times, and then it goes through Adam. So then there's a final, uh, a final kind of process of actually um, kind of checking for consistency and, and uh, quality assurance. So usually as I'm, as I'm going through editing the text, make, you know, making it look right, building the book, if I'm noticing it's missing a few things or it just doesn't seem like, like the others, I'll either discuss it with the, with the tutor or, or Damien as well and we'll see if we can, there's any other ways that we can help think of some other, other answers. But it hasn't, it hasn't happened yet. Nope. Uh, Javid, uh, have you found an easy way of adding YouTube to an iBook? The only way that he's seen is through Bookery. I did it. I did it. Ah, grabbed you know, it. I grabbed it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yes. I used a, uh, a no. method. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I think it's a simple <laughs> answer. Is that um, we haven't found an easy way of doing it. Uh, so usually we provide. Uh, just Links. the direct link. Yeah, yeah, to the, it. And that's what we have been doing lately, actually. Which is obviously the downside of that is it means that they have to be online to to kind of uh, to watch it. Um, uh, but obviously, it means you're not increasing the file size as a result of adding the video. So there, there is a bit of a trade-off there. Uh, Beth asks, "Did you employ a learning technologist to help you with the development of the iBook?" Yes, his name is Adam. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. Um, how do you ensure currency of the content over time? It's a good question, Susan. Oh, yeah. um, we always, every single year, will go back, um, what we, especially with the feedback that we're getting from the students um, as they work their way through the ebooks. Um, but every single year, we always try and make sure that we kind of revisit every single ebook and make sure that uh, not only the content, but the, the kind of the feel of it and the, the links that we're mm. using are kind of up to date. The yeah, the tutor will, will go through and they will click on every single link and, uh, you know, and if they find some new ones in the meantime as well, they'll send them through to me. Uh, interesting difference with our role of iPads to staff who wanted me with lots of... <laughs> yeah, so Jack, Jack uh, notes the interesting difference with our rollout of iPads to staff who wanted slash needed lots of training. Right. Yes, uh, it's... Um, and I think the, the interesting thing is, is that uh, my experience is that staff tend to be scared of it. Yes, I don't know yeah. Why. <laughs> I guess you just got to use it. You got to use it. Yeah. Just, that's what I tell my students: just play with it. You're not going to break it. No. And you know, from a, from certainly from a learning experience, you know, it, me telling you what to do almost goes against exactly what we're trying to develop in the eBooks. Mm. So actually. You know, get out there, do it, and try it for yourself. And actually, the, the learning experience is far, is far better. Um, have you essentially replaced the VLE then? Uh, with though we have um, uh, what's what's the thing? So we've gone alongside it with 
we use both. Yes. Yes. So we have activities embedded in the ebook which are Moodle activities. Um, so they go back to Moodle, do their activities, uh, come back to the book, carry on the learning, go back to Moodle, and then say at the end of their course they'll be doing tests um, on Moodle. So we we just uh, we work alongside the BLE. We're not replacing it. Yeah. I think one of the bonuses of of using the BLE is that we can actually track the students. Um, so we do get a feel for. Uh, you know, those students are perhaps not accessing the material as often as that they should do. Um, so it's probably one of our first signs that students are potentially not engaging. So something may be happening in their life, which is actually restricting them from engaging with material. So we do keep uh, the links uh, mainly to kind of quizzes and forums. Um, and it just kind of give, gives us a little bit of a feel for, for where the students are. Uh, not really a question from Sue, but certainly a, a comment. I have a feeling that you can't run iBook and an iPad Mini. The, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Um, yeah, you can open iBooks and an iPad Mini. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I so think, I think you can. I think I've seen it. Yeah. I haven't tried it. Ah, uh, uh, maybe not. Oh, yeah. Good. But I don't know. <laughs> Hold the hands up for that one. <laughs> Uh, Scott, uh, you said it takes 12 months to develop an ebook. Obviously, you're working on more than one ebook at a time. How many have been developed in parallel? Four. So there's about four, usually. Yeah. It depends on, we try to roll it out as the cohort have gone through, um, and each level, so the four units, is split across two years because they're part time students. Um, so they'll, they'll have two or three units within one year and um, so usually it's up to a maximum four at the moment we've got four uh, that are kind of running in parallel uh, what about accessibility it's a very good question actually um, yeah um, luckily the ipad is chocked full of accessibility features and um, so basically we've, we've let apple cover that one and um, it is fully usable as as, as um, Far as we're aware, yeah, it's 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 a it's a great piece of software. Uh, Jack, do you have a formal project management setup? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. We have quite a detailed timeline. We do. Um, yeah, a massive Gantt chart um, that we we have. Um, so Adrian Burden, who's a project leader on this, and then Damien, obviously, and myself, we have. Uh, Every two weeks we have a meeting. We consult how far we've we've got on the on the Gantt chart. We discuss things that of worries, ideas that we have for the future. We discuss the project in general. So it is a very structured. Yep. Yeah. It ha it has to be to kind of keep track of uh, of staff and make sure that they're trying that they are, you know, keeping to the timescales that we mm. want. And you know, because obviously we we can't afford to delay uh, an ebook going live to the students. Uh, so we do have to kind of manage it quite tightly. Uh, Ginny asks, uh, do you suggest students re-download an ebook if it's been updated? Good question there. Um, no, no, well, if, if, it's, only, if, only it's, if it's really detriment, if, if something isn't working. Yeah, if, if it's been updated while they're studying, which to be honest, I don't think has actually ever happened. No, because um, everything's been working. Yeah, because we have to make sure it kind of we, we are one hundred percent happy with it before it goes out. Um, then no, um, and any of the updates haven't been particularly significant. No, no, since. I think there's we've, a few websites have, have died, a few links have died, but um, we replace those for the next cohort and next year that come through. Uh, Sue asks, is this approach being picked up by other faculties, departments in the university? So the, well, we've been to a lot of meetings. A lot of people are very interested in in what we're doing, and there is a lot of talk about it. Um, in terms of, have they? I think I think there some some. I think maybe the business school are, are looking into it. I, as far as we're aware, nobody's built any iBooks yet, as yet, other than ourselves. We, you know, we're delivering this full undergraduate course online. We're the first up so far that we know doing this. You know, any anywhere yeah. really. It's, it's it's quite hard work. <laughs> yeah. Um. So um, yes, I think the answer is no. Um. If a student, yeah, also aware of time. So uh, uh, if a student does read, download a book, will they lose all their notes and annotations? Well, they would. Um, 
they would have two copies of the book because I'd make a, a, a new version. So if, if it had got into that situation of where something was drastically wrong, which hopefully it won't ever do, but they, yes, they download, say, the, the new version and they could run that con, uh, concurrently uh, alongside their previous versions. So they could email themselves the notes, they would never lose those, and they could carry on making notes in the new version, but they can't merge the versions. Uh, Javid asks, do you stock library images which must be paid for, uh, i.e. for better quality, or are they free uh, or ro royalty free? So it's Creative yeah, Commons. Creative Commons is where we, we hunt our images down from. Uh, is there any mechanism for peer support in this learning style? Um, that's basically done through uh, the VLE and the forums. So I make sure that the, the, program, uh, the program site on Moodle uh, has forums which are open to everybody so everybody can see that so uh, and I do try and encourage that I would say there's there's probably less peer support um, up and down the years than there is on site just because people are relatively isolated uh, when they are studying um, there is there is some more of this presentation left as well so <laughs> we're just we're just uh... Uh, have a book on the iPhone Okay, it's good. Uh, can you run iBooks, iPod Mini? Um, language interactive. Uh, where do your commissions come from? It's a question from Susan. Uh, Com commissioned to who commissions us to write the ebooks? Um, what is the department? The department, yes, yeah. It's division. Well, we sort of had the division, the division, the and then the uh, department backed us. Where have been the big last? So this is the last question. Uh, where have been the biggest production challenges to date? Uh, uh, file sizes. It was just because I just crammed them full of so many videos, and then it became so huge, and then it was impossible to download. And then we rang up Apple, and they didn't have any clue as to, as to what was the problem was. And we because we were pretty cutting edge when we were when we were doing all of this. Um, so then, so then. It, that, that was a challenge, but then slimming it down, that helped meet that challenge. Then another thing that we had was when we were updating the eBooks, um, I was doing it in the same file. And when you downloaded that file onto your iPad, it, it, it just, everything broke and we couldn't understand why it did that. And we found out that you had to, um, you couldn't you couldn't duplicate the file. You had to um, create copies of it. But I think they fixed that now because there is a duplication option in uh, iBooks Author. Okay, so uh, kind of uh, moving on for the for the last little bit, we have as we've gone on, um, we've tried to make sure that we evaluate every, everything that we're doing just to kind of make sure that we are on, we are on the right track and the students do like it. Um, so there are surveys at the end of each ebook. Um, and we're actually just in the process of analysing for uh, some focus groups. Uh, the, the basic, the basic idea, which is exactly what we wanted, is that students do love using the iPads and the iBooks. Obviously, uh, it's kind of one device. Uh, it's very interactive and really quite important for them. It's very portable. Um, so we do have some uh, elite athletes, um, and you know they can actually take the iPad. Uh, to training and in between training sessions, they can actually sit down and do a little bit of work. Um, and then equally, you know, so many people are now saying that the commute to work uh, is actually so much better because that kind of, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes, which used to be relatively dead time, uh, is they can actually spend a little bit of time doing doing some work on the on the iPad. Um, so for them, they're actually absolutely loving it. So it fits really well with their uh, with their lifestyle and, and typical of these kind of students is that they are extremely busy. Um, you know, they'll have a family, they'll have full-time employment, they'll generally kind of play sport to a, to a relatively high level. So they're interested in, in doing a lot of training uh, and they actually manage to do a degree as well. So sometimes I don't quite know how they do it. Um, and obviously one of the most important things is that they're actually enjoying the content. Um, but kind of from our perspective, what we found is that they seem to be engaged more, which is obviously really nice to see. So th there is more forum use uh, and probably because of the ease of use so they don't have to kind of uh, log on to Moodle uh, as much nowadays. They can just go straight through via the MMU app. Um, there does seem to be more email contact with staff. 
Uh, and one of the really interesting things, which is, is actually quite a feature uh, of using an iPad, is that they're often taking screenshots uh, of any kind of issues that they're having, uh, whether it's with the content or whether it's with the actual kind of the, the process, uh, and emailing those screenshots to staff, which obviously, you know, before the iPads, are just really was very, very difficult to do. Uh, so he, this, I love this. Uh, I love this picture. Uh, this is a slide of one of our students. Um, this was a couple of years ago. Um, uh, so she was in a, her first year when she was actually starting, getting used to the study and starting to study. Uh, so we have a great example of multitasking um, with her watching the Great British Bake Off uh, and learning about uh, uh, lactate and, and uh, muscle physiology. Um, I think the interesting to the, the other interesting thing to kind of take from that is that you notice that even though the ebook has actually got built-in note-taking facility, um, what we do actually find is that the students still prefer to write stuff down, uh, which is actually quite interesting. Um, we'll we'll have to see whether that changes over the time. So as they become more familiar with the actual uh, with the mode of learning, or whether they use the embedded um, the embedded, embedded note taking feature, um, but at the moment uh, they're still writing stuff, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so we've also monitored the test scores. Um, so as you can see, so this is uh, the percentage score for the physiology tests. Uh, physiology is the first unit that they take uh, when they start the course. Uh, the the blue bar is pre iPad, so that's 2011 2012. So that's before we actually kind of gave the iPads out. Um, average marks are actually you know generally quite good uh, there thereabouts. Um, and then the red and the green bars are the two subsequent years after that. Uh, and what we found was that there was a step, you know, there, there was definitely a step change in the in the results. Uh, so results increased once we uh, actually released uh, uh, released the iPad. Uh, so that's really kind of nice to see. I have to say, for the first year, I didn't believe it, um, but we seem to have got uh, consistent results there at the moment. If we look at the other units, so not just looking at physiology, so we've got biomechanics and psychology. Um, the, the the fourth unit for the level is is a, a residential, so it doesn't it's it's not quite the same, so it's difficult to compare. But again, the, the, the basic kind of idea is that pre-iPad, uh, the unit results um, were, were okay. Um, but as soon as we actually kind of gave the, the iPad out, there was a, a, an increase in the, in the average mark for the unit. Uh, apart from psychology, which you can see there on the right-hand side, um, there was an increase, but it was a very minor increase, uh, which is probably a reflection of the, an average grade of just over 60. Is, is actually quite a good average grade anyway, so there wasn't much to change there. Uh, so again, quite quite consistent results in terms of uh, an increase in the grade uh, that we're seeing uh, with the students using the iPads. So the you know the first two phases uh, we've kind of been and gone now. We've kind of got, we've gone through those, uh, and we've now moved into this final kind of uh, phase of innovation and, and transformation of our pedagogy. Uh, and it's certainly one thing that when I am supporting staff, it's, you know, it's something that I'm constantly um, uh, reinforcing is that, you know, we're not just about regurgitating the existing material. It's not just about, you know, putting your lecture on there. Um, you know, there's more to it than that. You know, how can we actually transfer, transform the experience of the student, the learning experience of the students? Uh, and it was it was interesting. I came across this uh, model by um, Quentin Jura um, while we were kind of uh, or kind of in the middle of the project, really. And it was interesting that we do follow his SAMR model. So what we actually did, the process that we went through, um, we actually followed that. So the first phase was very much about uh, substitution. So it's kind of where we use the technology as a tool substitute with no real kind of functional change. So, for instance, just simply transferring the paper-based uh, material into eBooks, you know, and kind of hold our hands up. That's where we started, and that's what we started to do. Uh, and we did kind of dabble in this in the augmentation stage, where we're using technology as a tool substitute uh, with some functional improvement, such as making the notes in eBook. But ultimately, what we're after uh, is is 
this final stage of the Samar model, which is the kind of the learning transformation, where we kind of look to, to, uh, to the technology for, to allow us to significantly redesign our pedagogy, to actually redesign the activities. Um, so it, it might be as simple as using Google Docs. Uh, and I think where we where we really want to be, and again, this is kind of, you know, when I am supporting staff, this is this is kind of where I'm, I'm trying to, to kind of uh, get them to, to look towards, is to actually um, use the technology to create new tasks that they just previously couldn't do. Uh, and the apps that Adam showed you earlier, I think, are really, really good examples of that is that without those apps, you know, the, the student just wouldn't be able to do those activities. Um, and I think that's one of the beauties of, uh, of the iPad and the, and the iBooks um, and the kind of the process that we've gone through is that we definitely can um, kind of help staff um, transform the, the kind of the learning experience of the students. So in terms of a, a conclusion then, um, so from a, a student perspective, you know, they, they love this idea, it's one platform. Uh, it's, the only, it's pretty much the only thing that they've got to carry around if they need to. Um, and I think one of the important things is, is and that's one of the, the, the reasons why we, we gave the students iPads, is that it's, it's about ownership. It's their iPad, it's their material, it's their degree, and they can integrate it into their life in whatever best fits for them. So we're not kind of forcing them to, to kind of study in a particular way. They're allowing that to occur naturally and, and kind of whatever fits for them. The easy use is, you know, is, is vital. You know, the, the age range and age isn't necessarily the, 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 the main factor, but the age range is quite large on our degree. Um, so we needed to make sure that it was easy to use for people that weren't particularly familiar with computers. Satisfaction is high and grades have actually increased as well, which is which is great. So from a staff perspective, development time is um, is a consideration. It does take quite a while, um, especially when you you know you build it on top of the existing workload model for staff. Um, and that development needs support. So it needs that you need somebody there or the group of people there that can actually help uh, help staff kind of uh, realize the potential of of the of the software and of the device um, so if you if you like it's about inspiration uh, and, and allowing you know and giving that inspiration to staff and so actually you can do it in this way if you really wanted to uh, and as adam said it does need buy-in so it does mm, need the staff definitely. to engage with that because otherwise that you know, it, it's uh, it's a lost cause so the, the creation of the ebook is actually really quite easy, um, and I think that's that is you know worth bearing in mind. It is really important, but you do actually need to have a clear goal of what you want to achieve. So it's because of the ease of use of the ebook creation. It's not just about transferring your existing material, and that is generally the first. That is the default option. Is right. Okay, I've got these lectures. I've got this material. I want to transfer it across into an ebook, and therefore it's going to be great. Uh, and actually, it's it's not quite as simple as that. So yes, it's really great. It's really good that it's easy, but that ease um, can actually lead you into a bit of a trap if you're not careful. So you've got to think transformative. You've got to think outside of the box and try and be creative in your pedagogy. Uh, and I think that's probably a really good way of uh, of ending the presentation. So. Thank you very much for, for listening. We will there are, kind of there are some questions. There are questions. some questions, Damon. Uh, I'm just going to turn our webcam back on. Uh, so I'll press this button here. And there we are. We're back on. Oh, pardon. I drag this bit over here. Okay. So, hi, everyone. Um, so, okay. So we had a question from Beth. So I'm just going to go up there and find that. So Beth asked about... And yeah, lots of questions. So that's a good thing. Yeah. So, uh, so you have, oh, Susan asked, do you have a streaming server for I in the house videos? Uh, we do, which I answered Susan. Um, but we, um, we don't use it because, oh, we're looking at this one, this lecture there. Yeah. We don't use it because uh, we wanted the videos to be embedded directly in the ebooks so the students who didn't have internet access could still 
learn, could still learn without needing that. So Beth, here we go, asks, how do you develop the online community amongst students? Are there any collaborative tasks? And if so, did he use the VLE or other web two tools for this? Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the hardest things actually, um, as, uh, given, given the kind of the, uh, the structure of the degree uh, and students study uh, at very different kind of rates. Um, so we kind of give them a, a submission point um, and then maybe one or two kind of, you know, kind of forum based activities depending on the unit. Uh, but ultimately they're kind of left to their own, you know, own devices to kind of um, uh, to study as and when. So developing that community is actually really hard and it's one of the things that I've kind of struggled with uh, and have, have actually spent quite a lot of time attempting to do. And the, one of the important things is getting it right from the start. So induction activity and getting or pre-induction activity and getting them to engage in some kind of collaborative work before they actually even get here. And then once they get here for the induction is then build on that so they're actually having that opportunity to kind of put uh, names to faces, um, I think is really, really important. Um, and the, the residentials that we have, uh, I'll always try and make sure that the, the first one is, is within a few months of them actually uh, starting the, the degree so they can actually then, when they do come back onto site, you know, they can actually kind of interact with each other and interact with, with, the, with the year above. Uh, so I think that's really important as well. Um, it's one of the things that we struggle with the iPad, uh, well, sorry, with the with iBooks, is that it's very difficult to embed forum-based uh, mm -hmm. work directly into the eBooks. So we'll always have to go out to VLE. Um, so depending on the unit, the staff member will kind of put up activities in the VLE to actually kind of encourage that. So it's a relatively, so in that sense, it's a relatively standard. Uh, to, to most of the distance learning courses, uh, and it's actually kind of separate from the from the ebook. Yeah. Uh, so Anne's asked a question. She said, uh, "How many full time people does it take to produce these ebooks?" Well, I mean, I'm one, but I'm full time. So this is this is what I do. This is my job. Um, but the the others involved, it's it's an addition. Yeah. So you've got. Uh, four four units for for the level. So there's four members of academic academic staff which are actually um, you know engaged in normal kind of academic activities, and then this is just one additional thing that's um, either as part of or on top of their workload model. Um, so they'll be just kind of developing that material as they would do any kind of on-site uh, uh, unit, for instance. Uh, you've then got myself. Uh, as the program leader and the person that's doing all the editing. Uh, and then we've got Adrian Burden as well. So he's also kind of, but they're not necessarily full time kind of geared towards this program. No. We all have our other different kind of uh, roles and tasks to do. Okay. Will Stewart asked, have you considered using open badges as part of the innovative nature of the course? Not yet. No, yeah, we we yeah. we're hearing a lot of a lot of things about these um, open badges. We go to a lot of conferences, and we're saying, "Wow, yeah, these people are using them in uh, interesting ways, and they seem good." And we haven't. I'm we don't. Yeah, there, we yeah. don't. We don't know if it if it yeah. if it's what we're going to go for, or. We'll see. I think we'll. Yeah. I think we'll see. We'll see how the um, how that kind of pans out, uh, as you know, as to whether people do kind of find it uh, particularly useful. I'm sure everybody out there has kind of got their own experiences of it. Um, and if it's one of those things that does take off and, and does become successful, then I'm sure we'll integrate it at some point. Yeah. Um, Ginny asked, have, have we got the references from our slides? And I said yes. And so we'll, yeah. we'll put them on. Um, we'll, we'll scroll through once once this is over. And then uh, you can just pause the video and, and check out check out what we've got. Um, there was another question down here somewhere. Uh, people got to go. That's fine. May I give a cheeky plug for the research methods I book? Oh, right. oh, I may okay. have seen that one. Okay, Sue. So, yeah, we'll check that out. I think I've seen that one. And yeah, I think I think everyone's everyone's just heading off now. Do you? Some ah oh, Ryan here has a question. Mm. Some of the grade improvements were just stunning. Ah, oh, thanks. Brilliant. Uh, do you create the introduction of the iBooks for all of that, or do you 
or were there um, other course revisions happening at the same time? No, there wasn't. We actually, and that was one of the things we tried to make sure is that there weren't any changes to the uh, to the course. Um, so it was just about the delivery mode. Um, you know, and the thing is that you can split that up into into you know the use of iPads and the use of uh, eBooks. Um, you know, increasing in kind of forum use and engagement and uh, contact with staff and all of that's going to contribute. Uh, but ultimately. The, the difference between pre-iPad and post-iPad in terms of the content and materials and, everything, and also the, 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 tests. the tests themselves were exactly the same. Okay, uh, Javid here has a question saying, if corrections are identified while a book has been downloaded, do you make the edits and ask the students to download the updated version? Uh, we went through this earlier, didn't we? And we just said, um, if it's minor, no. If it's something horrifically major, then yes. But usually, it's it's nothing. Nothing goes through our net, does it? No. <laughs> we're we're very um, specific in it. Uh, so Sue's talking about uh, pages. yeah pages, uh, various okay. pages. Yes, so she's just talking. Can we download a sample of the iBook? Well, there is a sample. There is. Um, yeah. I don't know if our website's currently if working you, at the moment. But if, you know, it is. If you if you uh, if you search for MMU uh, Sports oh, Science Distance somewhere. Learning. Um, then you'll uh, it's, it's kind of like the first uh, first hit that com comes up that will take you to our kind of uh, web page and on there you should be able to download it was yep. certainly working last time yeah, yeah you're right yeah I got myself confused so with, uh, with something else but yeah um, so that works so yes you can download a uh, sample yes brilliant um, thanks Beth thanks Beth yeah thanks Jack. thanks Jack are you on Twitter yes yeah. We are. I think. I think uh, right at the top of it. Um, my mine is just at Damien Keel, or one word. Okay. And uh, Kate says thank you very much. So, should we should we end it on on Kate? Thanks, Kate's Javid. Answer. Thanks for the questions. Oh, as well. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I mean, if if anybody does have any questions, we will hang around for for a, for a little bit. It'll take us a while just to kind of take things apart. But uh, so we'll, we'll put our references on. So there's there are. Two slides, two slides of references. Yeah. So we'll leave one on for a couple of minutes. And I then... think it's the Cochrane one, the Naismith one, and the uh, Jilly Salmon one. Those are the ones that kind of make the And the Fletcher one, which is the oral one. Okay. Anything Excellent else to say? Oh, a lot of people saying thank you. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll do it again. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay. Bye.